All right, good afternoon, this is Dale. Hey everybody, this is Aaron. All right, so today's topic is gonna to be a, a recap of the 2023 real estate market. We're gonna start nationally and then we're gonna break it down to the local level with our local expert here, Aaron Cam. Yes, let's do this. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a longer video here, so bear with us, but we're gonna unpack a lot of data here with you today. So I'd say there's three key things that we wanna make sure that we, we highlight first. One, inflation, GDP, and we're in an election year, right? So inflation is moving in the right direction, thankfully. You know, I just heard that Nevada was number two for most expensive groceries in the country. Wow, yeah. I hadn't heard that yet. Yeah, 350 bucks on average per family per week. I believe it. Yeah, so anyway, digress to touch, but that's a touch on the inflation part. So it's moving in the right direction. We could talk for 15 minutes on inflation alone. GDP, uh, the, the numbers are looking strong, stronger than expected, which is good for growth. And then we're also in an election year. We're not going to go into politics here, but obviously during an election year, uh, they want to make things look good for the economy, right? Yeah. So when we look at the national data, so here's, I'm going to start with the three main concerns that buyers and sellers have had. Number one, the survey said 72% was, was mortgage rates. Right. Obviously, they went from what two and a half to to seven, eight yeah. percent, like almost overnight. Almost it just went overnight. Over, it built quickly. So it just threw cold water on the market nationally across the board. Um, we also the second thing was inventory. Inventory got super tight because it's about fifty percent of the homeowners have an interest rate. Um, below 4%, and then we have a lot of cash transactions in the market, right? So those people are not moving, right? And then number three was affordability, right? So what we're projecting, what the data is projecting, and we'll give our sourcing of this too. It'll be in the comments below, uh, Keeping Current Matters, where we get a lot of our data points. So we'll show the sourcing of where all their data comes from. So we're not, you know, we're not just making these data points up, right? So number one, we are anticipating that we're going to see how many basis point drops this year, Aaron, in mortgage rates. We're looking at, I can't remember what you told me now. All right, there you go. I put her on the spot. That way I look smart. So it's, it's three basis points. So March, um, May, and June, uh, we're anticipating seeing three 25-point basis drops. So before I talk in a little more detail on, on what that means with the rates, let's look at uh, where the 10-year bond yield sets compared to where it is to mortgage rates. So mortgage rates, the, 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 the interest rate usually hovers around 1.7% um, above where the 10-year yield's at. Right now, it's 2.7% above. Big. It's a big, yeah. it's a big spread, right? So we're projecting that to be roughly, let's say it goes to 2%, 75 basis points plus 75.75 bond yield spread decrease is 1.5%. So where are we seeing rates roughly right now on resale? Right now we're, we're looking in the sevens. In the sevens. Yep. Okay, so let's just call it 7% for simple math here. If we see 1.5% drop, that puts us at five and a half. What all the experts are saying is that we're gonna go below six. And all the data points I've seen uh, nationally is that one, when the rate goes into the fives, it's gonna completely open up the marketplace. Uh, absolutely. No, we're, we're 100%. Everybody, um, you've, you've heard this, you've probably said this yourself, right? If we, we want the fives. We know if we, we hit that 5.5, anywhere in that 5%, um, buyers are going to flood the market. I think that really leads us into the number two concern for most consumers, right? Inventory. Inventory, yep. Yeah, and inventory is a challenge and it's going to continue to be a challenge. So I think there's two conversations here. One is affordable housing, and this kind of transitions into the local data that we're going to talk about here in a moment, but I want to keep it national and regional just for a second. So we kind of have two camps here. One is I'm already in the market, meaning I already own real estate, and I've captured a lot of that upswing and appreciation. So now I'm just waiting for rates to drop some, and then I'm going to make my move. And then you have the ones that never got in the market. I, I still have people that haven't bought that the market's going to crash. The market's going to do this. The market's going to do that. Ever since the Great Recession, never got in the market right. or never invested. Mm -hmm. Didn't even invest when rates went into the threes yeah. and had the money. 
right? So one is you want to buy real estate and then wait. Don't wait to buy real estate. So affordability wise, and we're going to talk more about this in the local. Well, let me back up here. I want to talk about appreciation. So nationally, here's what's projected over the next five years. 2024, two and a half percent. 25, two and a half. 26, three percent. 27, three and a half percent, 28, four percent. This is national. Mm -hmm. So again, this is some crystal ball stuff. We don't know exact data, right? But if you bought a $400,000 home, by the end of 2028, you would have $75,000 in equity. This isn't factoring in the um, fixing your payment, right? Because most countries, a lot of them do not have fixed interest rates. Mm -hmm. And that's not factoring in the pay down on principal every month and the tax deduction, which is a gift yes. in America as well, that we take for granted, right? So when you look locally, for those of you that are waiting or, or you, you feel you can't get into the market, it's too expensive, I would encourage you to get into the market and wait. Mm -hmm. Buy a condo, buy a townhome. You know, buy, buy a house that's not exactly what you want, but buy in an area that maybe not be exactly the area you want. And then let time do the heavy lifting, and then you'll be able to slowly move up in the market, mm -hmm. right? On average, over the last 50 years, the appreciation rate is 4.8, 4.9%. That's incredible. Yeah, when you average everything out over time. So that's a quick... Drink out of the fire hydrant from the national area. Regionally, real quickly, we want to we want to look at the regions, right? Obviously, the southeast is doing phenomenal, right? It's people want to go where the weather's nice and it's still affordable. So Carolinas, Florida, Georgia, still relatively affordable compared to a lot of the other metro markets. California, obviously, very expensive, but that's what's driving the Nevada market and the Arizona market is 30, 35% of our closings come straight out of California, mm -hmm. which we're, we're cheap compared to California. So on a regional Absolutely. level, we're going to see a ton of influx of money continuing to come into our market. All right. I talked a lot. It's Aaron's <laughs> turn here. Aaron's the uh, local expert. We've been in business together for how many years? 12 years. 12 years. 12 years. Mm -hmm. I've been in the business 20 years now. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Aaron's been in the business longer than me. 24. 24 yeah. years. He got 44 years of experience <laughs> here locally. Yeah. Uh, so, so what's going on in the local market? Give us kind of a breakdown if you would. You know what? Um, it's interesting. We were really talking about appreciation and, and Vegas as a whole. Um, this is really where it's, it's going to tie into where you source your data, right? So when we pull data, just to give you guys uh, kind of behind the curtain, we're looking at condos, home homes, and single family homes um, just in the greater Las Vegas Valley, right? North Las Vegas, Las Vegas, and Henderson. We have three cities in our beautiful metro. Um, so when we look at that, you'll have sources such as Zillow that are like, hey, Vegas took a hit. But when you compare, if you had bought a $400,000 home last year, you actually saw 5% appreciation this year. So wow. Wow. even in a year where everybody pulled back, where inventory stayed really low, our interest rates were high. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. We still yeah. had 25% of our consumers being cash investors. So, yeah. you know, that's where... When you look at our city compared to other metropolitan areas, and Dale, you and I were having a conversation. I want you to, to kind of share what you had shared with me um, in comparison to like Phoenix, for yeah. example. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and what we have talking about our, our local market here, um, how, why that growth? Why are investors yeah. still coming here? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great question. And obviously, before we did the video here, we were just chit chatting to structure how we wanted to talk about this with you today. <clears throat> and, um, Vegas has so much upside long term, right? And then I think a good a good cross section to look at is what happened in Phoenix over the last 20, 30 years. You know, being a, a business coach for one of our ancillary companies, MAPS at Keller Williams, I have the gift of working with top teams in all the metro markets around the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what I was um, one of my buddies mentioned it, and he got all excited about investing in Vegas. Mm -hmm. He was because he came out here to visit and saw everything that was going on with pro sports and tech companies and uh, actors huge. and all this stuff mm -hmm. going on here. Yeah. That uh, Phoenix really diversified and saw a lot of growth once they started bringing in a lot of the pro sports teams, mm -hmm. and then a lot of bigger corporations started to come in. 
Um, so that's, you know, we're 3 million people now. Phoenix is 9 million. So I, we could talk today about what we're seeing in gaming. Uh, but yeah, obviously we're world class for yeah, entertainment. Absolutely. But we have a lot coming online. We have what two casinos come online so, this year? Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, I want us back to back opening weekends. Yeah, we had had two. One in the southwest. Um, we're really seeing. Right, Vegas is known for being the stripper. I'm sure at some point you probably you live in a hotel, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Reminds right? me of being, you know, being in Montana. Do you ride horses? No, yeah, yeah, I mean yes, yeah. but no, that, that's not yeah. that's not yeah, our life. I don't, I don't ride a horse to work, and I don't <laughs> live in the casino. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Vegas is is such an incredible city, and as we begin to really diversify, we knew once we had one major league team come in, which right was was fully with the Vegas Golden Knights. Go Knights, go! Such a huge, huge. Um, thing for our, our city. We're huge hockey fans, right? Hockey in the desert. Yes, it absolutely my worked. Nice shirt today. <laughs> yeah, you are. So from there right now, now we saw the Raiders come in with Allegiant Stadium. Uh, before that, we had the women's uh, basketball come in back to back championship. That is so exciting yeah, for our city. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have the A's now coming in. So we have professional baseball. That's for Tropicana, right? Yeah. That's for imploding Tropicana in the stadium. The, that's, that's kind of yeah. the, the talk. And yeah. so, yes, everything gets built around kind of that strip. But when we start pulling out and going out, right, we have actors like Mark Wahlberg who has have made Las Vegas their home. They want to bring in movie studios. We're seeing a lot more movies be filmed here. Um, we're in a desert that allows tech companies to come in and bring their servers because the chance of a natural disaster is so, so slim. So we share all this because when we start to look at, right, we're talking about appreciation and, and what's happened. In 2024, Las Vegas is rated to be the number 12 city in growth of the of, nation. Of all the cities around the country. Yeah, yeah. number 12. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so for our, you know, we used to call it a, a little city. We're, we're not little anymore. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. really growing. But yeah. in comparison to metropolitan markets, like you were saying, yeah. we really are, right? We're, we're, we are still small. Um, and really what we want to look at more so with that local data that we had talked about, yes, we're, we're going to see fantastic growth. I think a lot of that is going to come with interest rates, with inventory, um, starting with seasonality and all of that. Um, but some really cool statistics that I was reading, Dale, was uh, talking about master plan communities and how in 2022 um, that we saw, a, you know, a huge hit. Um, every, everybody, master plan communities, new belts, ev everything went down. What we're seeing yeah. now is construction well, costs. Well, it was in like June or July, rates started flying up yeah. and it just threw like ice water on the market. Yeah, it yeah. did. So everything yeah. kind of came to this, this abrupt halt <clears throat> and we yeah. sat here in this late fall market and went, what what's happening? Yep, and, and then, prices usually go down when rates go up, mm -hmm. but they didn't. They didn't, yeah. and that that's really where everything just kind of froze, yeah. and we saw it sit. Um, and so then in 2023, we saw home sales here in Las Vegas jump up 22 percent. So you're looking, okay, I mean, a, a, almost a, a, it's a quarter, right? I mean, like we're, that's kind of a big number. Yeah. Compared to nationally, nationally, new home sales only went up 14 percent wow. in 2023 yeah. so you can see where our growth is really still booming so why, why do we see so much growth in the new home sector would you say um with us it, it's a lot of um our builders shifted and they shifted quickly very okay. quickly so instead of saying here here are all of our lots it's going to be 22 months before you can move into their home yeah. they stopped releasing and they they started building and when they got to um a framed phase they said okay here are four homes we're only releasing these four when these four have sold we'll release the next four and so we were able to take new home builds and now have them to, to be uh, not necessarily move-in ready they're still there but within four months you can now have your home so now people okay. don't have to wait now they're not changing their minds and, and going through that the other beautiful thing about new builds is they because of the control that they have we're they're still able to offer five and a half percent interest rates or, yeah. or 5.9 I think is is where they were we were in the yeah. fives yeah so yeah. where everybody else to go and buy a resale I'm, I'm looking at seven eight percent but I can go into a new bill at five and get a new home pick new pick home. all the stuff you like absolutely yeah so yep that makes sense okay it, it was it was a huge huge piece for us so overall looking at, at Las Vegas um Seasonality came back in, in 2022. We saw that in 2023. Yeah. And so if you're not familiar with seasonality is here in Las Vegas, um, typically we'll start to see our inventory increase. New listings start to hit uh, end of February, March. 
March, April, and May are our top months. June and July, we'll still see a little bit, but we'll see a, a decrease. Um, yeah, we'll slow down a bit when it's 120 degrees here. People are no, taking vacation. Absolutely. And, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. And so <clears throat> that August market really slows down. We see that uptick right after school has kind of started yeah. or, or right before school gets in because we want to be in our new homes, right, with, with kids. Yeah, school zoning and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, right, we'll go into the holidays and we'll dip again. Yeah. So seeing that ebb and flow is back. Um, what we're anticipating in 2024 um, with the talk about rates dropping in the second quarter, yeah. uh, we should see maybe a little bit, maybe a stronger summer yeah. than, than yeah. we have. Yeah. Um, but truly knowing when to buy now when maybe we don't have as many buyers on the market. So if we start seeing listings start to come on and our inventory starts to tick up, that's really where I'm going to encourage you if you're a buyer and looking uh, to purchase this year make that investment, you really want to do it in this first quarter yeah, is, is absolutely yeah, what yeah, I'd be yeah, recommending. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I agree. So um, <coughs> but to wrap it up, um, because we want to, uh, we wanted to share all of this data, we're actually going to leave you with a quote um, that you can read here. So what Dale and I feel is so important is being able to explain what's going on to the market, right? Not just, hey, here's our numbers, but talking about why this is big, why our town is growing, what we're seeing, and the factors behind it. So we really hope that we've shared great information with you, um, that, that we've educated you a little bit on the national market and our local market as well. And you can think of us, if you have any questions, even if it's just to wonder what the price of your home may be, what has your equity been over the last two years or, or since you bought, did you buy in 2020 and just curious to see where you're at? Um, let us be a resource. Please know that our business has been built on relationships. That's why we get to have the years mm -hmm. in business that, that we've had, uh, because our clients are extremely important to us, answering your questions, being here to help you create a plan. And if that's, hey, I want to purchase in, in six months, absolutely. Uh, you know what? I don't have the ability now. I need to, to work on my credit. I need to uh, work on a portfolio. Let us create a five-year plan for you. We, we're here to be, again, a resource. Yep, yep. All right, so um, wrapping it up here, again, we want to just give you a pulse on the national data, pulse on the regional data, talk a little bit about what's going on locally, and all of this is uh, is just data, right? You know, being a consultant to our clients, each situation is going to be unique and different. You know, I like to focus on helping people create wealth through real estate. There's no other greater opportunity to create wealth long term than buying real estate. You know, the, the money markets, stock markets are great too, but unless you've got a lot of cash that you can pile in or you're you just steady doing the tortoise thing, putting, you know, putting your 50K in a year, you know, you're able to leverage money in real estate with the 20, 25% down. Right. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities opening up in that sector, too. So a lot of times it's don't sell the home you're in. So if you're locked in on a low interest rate, oftentimes when I sit down with you and Aaron sits down with you, we're going to tell you don't sell it. Whereas an average agent's going to sit down with you and say, "Ooh, let's sell it so they can get a commission. Right. Mm -hmm. For us, we want to help you create wealth. So oftentimes it's hold that property. Mm -hmm. It might be put a HELOC on it before you buy, take the HELOC money to buy the next primary because oftentimes people need the cash in the home they're in. So our goal is to help you acquire assets and hold them long term. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you're, you haven't bought, you know, we can help get you in the market with very little money down. So I could go on on that topic for a long time here, but we appreciate you and we look forward to the opportunity to help be a, a guide to you in the real estate market. Have a great 2024. Thanks, everybody.